Um, this is kind of going to be a little bit informal. We've got engineers here, um, Mr. Panther, yeah, no, Nathaniel. Nathaniel, Nathaniel, and uh, we have Ms. Suzanne Cooler, mm -hmm. and we have Ms. Pam. Pam who's also here. So they'll kind of be able to walk you through what the plans are. We've got them all set up. Make your questions, pose your questions, and we'll get your answers. Yeah. OK? Are they all with the county? Yes, ma'am. We're all Yes, and I'll, don't let me leave out my county manager. <laughs> leave out the county manager, Mr. Michael Kegler, is here with us as well. So we hope to have a good meeting. Y'all just get all excited about all the things that's going to happen. And, we pray for good ending. All right. So as Commissioner Milton said, this is a follow-up. I don't know how many of y'all were able to come to the POH. We had um, one of the last October, November. Oh, I didn't. Um, so we do have a plan for the entire Garrard Avenue project. But what we really wanted to focus on tonight is we still get a lot of concerns about the intersection of Chatham Parkway and Garrard Avenue. So we've got two big blown-up displays that we did an intersection control evaluation. We looked at all alternatives that we could improve the safety and the operation of that intersection. And when, when we went through that initial staging, there were two options. It was construct a roundabout or leave it stop control but add turn lanes so there's not as big of a backup. But long term, uh, the turn lanes would eventually fail as that's just your comment sheet. And I did get so that. This fixes the okay. solution. We'll talk. He told me he's going to introduce me. One of the things I wanted to point out that people don't realize in a normal, in a normal uh, intersection, you have 32 conflict points. Those are the points where when a vehicle pulls out and crosses, it crosses the path of another vehicle. Those are the areas where you have an opportunity to have a traffic accident. When you convert an intersection from a normal four-way intersection to a roundabout, you drop that down to eight. And that minimizes the opportunities for accidents. And then typically, in a roundabout, the, the accidents tend to be more side swipes. In the four-way stop, you typically have your T-bone accidents. Those tend to be the most severe. Um, you get severe injuries, and unfortunately, those tend to be the ones that have fatalities as well. So that's what we're presenting. Um, we can answer questions on any part of the project. The focus is the intersection. Uh, I think we have construction funding in FY27. Is that 20, 20, 25? 25. Um, the big, and I was telling Commissioner Milton this, right now we're waiting on the, you know, this is a federal aid project, so we have to go step by step. The benefit is we get federal money to help us pay for the design right away and construction. The downside is it takes a little bit longer to get to those points. So we're waiting on the concept report to be approved. And then after that, we'll start preliminary design. We expect that to be maybe a year to have right away plans done. When the right away plans are done, so about a year, year and a half from now, you're gonna start hearing back if you live in that, this section of Garrard Avenue from our county acquisition team that if we need to purchase any property from you that's what we'll come make an offer we'll negotiate that and try to work out a deal where we can get what we need to build this project um, so that's the gist of it I mean we're really here to answer questions concerns you all have um, about the project or or anything else along the corridor going going this way yeah so the when when you do a project like this you you really look at what are the what are the logical ways you can start and stop because every if you can see right now we're touching a lot of parcels along the corridor do you know how many parcels we're hitting I, I think right now that's 76 so to give you a I, that'll probably take us a year and a half to acquire that right away for that 76 parcels and we can't go to construction until we acquire that right away if we extend if we do this all as one project and extend it down then we're going to increase probably another 76 and then you double the time for right away and then we it, it's that much longer to get it done so that's certainly something we can work with Commissioner Milton there's a potential for a T-SPLOS coming up that we can look for ways that we can fund and start design on that section but this was the the first section that we were looking and focusing on I don't want to I know there's a potential for another T-SPLOS coming up and 
what Nathaniel is saying is when we have to do apply for federal money, it takes twice as long to get something done. If we do it with local money, we can cut that okay. time in half. So okay. uh, this is just a plug for T-SPLOS. When we put it back on the ballot, we're, we're hoping that more people vote for it next time around. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is this a forced acquisition, or if you don't have everybody 100% say, yes, I'll, I'll do this? Or it, if you don't have people that say, I don't want to do this? It, there is a negotiation that occurs. And unfortunately, in some points, when we get to a point where we have property owners that are unwilling to allow us to purchase it, we may have to condemn that property for. And then, then it goes to the courts, and the courts decide what the value of that property is. So it will be a forced mm -hmm. It's not. We, we try to avoid that at all costs because it, it takes longer for us to settle those down the road. We'd rather negotiate with you and find a solution that if we can do something else here or there to make this more, you know, Appe appeasing to you that we can work with you. So it, I, I don't want to say it's forced, but unfortunately the government does have condemnation ability if we can demonstrate the public benefit. And I think the safety improvements of the project demonstrate that public benefit for us. So we don't like to do it, but it's a potential. I do have another question unless somebody else wants to go next. Uh, you're talking about the sidewalks. Is that going to be on one side of Broad Avenue or on both sides? So right now we're proposing a sidewalk. Let me see my north arrow. We're proposing a sidewalk on the, I'm going to say up is north. I don't know if, no, it is. Okay. On the north side, we're proposing a five-foot sidewalk. On the south side, as it, at, at the concept level, it's a 10-foot trail right now, I believe. We're looking at whether we can tighten that up. and it, There may be an opportunity to narrow that trail up, but we really want to make this a complete street. We want to make it safe for all road users, those that bike. Yeah. You know, folks uh, pushing tell, tell kids. Tell what complete streets are. Nathan. Complete street takes into account not just cars. It takes into account pedestrians, people riding bikes. Uh, it takes into account, you know, moms pushing strollers. It's a road that's safer for everyone to use. Right now, if I had a child, I, I would not ride along Garrard Avenue, you know, on, on a bike. It's just not safe. But when we get done with this project, it's going to be safe for people to do it, that you don't have to get in your car to get to a destination. You have other, other opportunities to get from point A to point B if you want to. There is, we're, it's still going to be a two-lane street, I believe, with 11-foot lanes. So, and, and the benefit, tip, a typical uh, travel lane is 12 feet wide. But if you narrow it up a little bit, you, you, people, as you're driving, you feel a little more confined and you tend to speed less. So it's, it's almost a traffic calming measure to keep it at 11 feet. I think right now in some areas we only have 10 foot lanes, maybe less. So we really, and, and you can see in those areas where the cars are running off the road, they start running up the shoulder and then the road starts caving in. So we, re, we really need to make it a, a 11 foot, but we're not widening the road specifically to 12, 15 feet. We're just doing enough that that people can safely travel on it. The real widening of it is adding the sidewalks and the, and the trail. I just want to point out yeah. that the, um, although where you're looking at it is, the sidewalk is on the north side and the path on the south side. But as you get up, I believe it's where, um, where it becomes Lane Avenue. In that vicinity, I, I believe right yeah, now they're right. proposing that it'll swap at some point. Yeah, right before, um, when you pass, if Wild you're coming, yeah, if you're so. coming northeast, once you pass Wildwood Drive, there'll be a crossing, and then the trail and sidewalk flip sides. So. Yes, we're from this intersection going northeast. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, th I think so two things one is we are doing those 11 foot lane if, if, if we we're following the book it would be a 12 foot lane but we're narrowing it up so that's one thing that helps we also have some some concrete medians and hatching areas where we're making the uh, the vehicles go out and come back in just a little bit and that's a that's another way we're looking to do traffic calming this is concept level stuff we can continue to look at options um, We've heard the speeding complaints. I mean, I've been here 17 years, and I, I, we, we've heard it from you all. So we'll, we will look at options that 
that if any other traffic calming is warranted, we would certainly implement that. The curb and gutter may help some too. Yes. Meaning to reduce the speed limit. It needs to be 25 now because people are doing 50. <coughs> So, well, and, and hold on, hold on. So, uh, I haven't, I, I don't know. Our intention was really to talk, uh, the focus was on the roundabout and the intersection. If there were other questions pertaining to the project, Buckhalter was not going to be, was not intended to be discussed. Well, what, what was your question on Buckhalter Road, though? I, I see that fire hydrants oh. are all up and down Buckhalter. On Buckhalter, yeah, the city of Savannah yeah. installed a water line along Buckhalter Road. Yeah. And as a part of that, they put fire hydrants. Yeah, that, that, that's for, that's to service the, uh, the, um, Get a warehouse, Rockingham Farms. But well, we're not in the city on Buckhalter. No, but they, they had to go down the county right away in order to, to run the line into Rockingham. So it, are we having issues, problems back there? Well, we don't have fire hydrants where I live, mm -hmm. which is towards the dead end. And I have been told Well, we're. I read on the commissioner's website that if you have fire hazards, you can save twenty percent on your homeowners. So we're being proactive. We're right now. We're, we've got a lot of money through the federal government through ARPA. So we've targeted some of the densest areas in the county to do fire hydrant studies. And the the one right now is Ogeechee Farms. That's the closest to you, out on Chevis Road. Yeah. We're using that as a model. We're going to work out the kinks. And then we're going to look at a map and target all those other areas as we get funding to see, you know, where we can install additional fire hydrants. So we are working on that. Yes, sir. What is the uh, short-term fix for the curve on the other end down there where we have a fatality several weeks ago uh, coming around that curve at uh, 60, 70 miles an hour? Um, so we, we haven't gotten that accident report yet to see all the details of it. We'll certainly pull that. We are looking at options um, to see if traffic calming is warranted. I actually drove through that specifically to look at that curve on the way in. Um, it's properly signed. There's advance warning signs. Um, you have the chevrons telling you it's a curve. I mean, there's a, at, at some point, there's only so much we can do. The one thing that came to mind is if we restripe the curve and then add the raised pavement markers that have the reflectors on it, but unfortunately, that accident happened at 10 o'clock in the morning, and that's not... Oh, I thought it was in... But it, point being, it was during the day. Those reflectors are really what help you for the nighttime accidents, so... Hit his problem. Uh,
I don't I I don't dis I don't disagree with you, but I'll tell you candidly, we've done that in another area and we ended up taking the rumble strips out because the people that live by them complain about the noise and I, yeah. I, we've done it. I, I, I Well, you tell so, me the speed tables is what no, I think. The no, the rumble strips. Rumble it strips. makes so, noise. So the other thing yeah. I noticed. The other thing I noticed, the other thing I noticed is SC, uh, CCPD has a speed trailer out there now. That's not just. That's not just to d display the speed. It's recording data for us. So we're going to get data out of it to see time of day when the speeding occurs, how fast they're going. So as we get that, we're going to continue to look at it as we develop this project. But what I'm telling you is that the real speed is after the curve. People approach okay. because of the sharpness of the curve. You can go through there maybe 50 miles an hour. But once they pass, the people with, with the performance car, there's no clip going in. So I have to have to get to Wildwood, they're doing 70. Well, the best I can do with that is that's an enforcement issue at that time. And I, we can convey to CCPD. I, I, I can't change. I can't change some. I understand. I understand. I, I was just going to say, this has happened in this community twice. Yeah. Where, you know, the gas line exploded. We just had it a couple of years ago. We all had evacuated the area. So it is really an issue. Like, well, position. and part of that, the, the speeding's one, that gas thing probably needs to be put underground so it doesn't get hit. And we can talk to AGL yeah. about that. I mean, that's because the other thing I saw, there's bollards. I mean, they're right on the edge of pay. They're probably within the clear zone. The so gas line's been moved. Something was still sticking. I don't know what they the still got a come of back. Lines. Okay, but they're going to lower everything. But the the, gas line has okay. Yes, sir. Sure. So, so the county's implemented what's called a neighborhood traffic calming policy. As the policy currently stands and the road being 35 miles per hour, it, it, it's too fast for us to implement speed tables is what they're called. They're, it's not a speed bump, but it's a little long. If you've driven on 52nd Street, mm -hmm. it's similar to what the city's doing. We're actually doing a pilot program for that on Lansing Avenue. We've ordered them. Um, we initially closed the road. We got some complaints about that. So we're going to, that road met the warrants based on that policy. So we can certainly evaluate that um, and see if it's an option, but, but um, it, it, it would have the minimum, the minimum speed limit 
to post to to be considered for traffic calmings 30 miles per hour so we can look at it but i can tell you from an engineer the way you the way you look at and post speed limits is based on the 85th percentile and, and y'all are going to laugh but it's based on that means it's based on the the speed that 85 percent of the drivers drive because that's typically what they're comfortable driving so that's how you establish speed limits but we can certainly look at it and, and part of that we'll get some of the data from chief hadley's trailer to see what's going on out there and then we can ask him to move it you know right now it's in the curve because it's where the accident was maybe we can ask him to move it midway down the straightaway and get some additional data and see what that tells us and i know we've done that in the past sure sure Speeding on that side as well. Yes, okay. Awful. I can't even hardly get out of my driveway, and neither can my neighbor. Okay. Because if you well, sit there, you've got a 50-50 chance of some fool not coming around the corner on you. We we we'll talk with Chief. I know they've got a couple of their speed trailers. We will get data where it's at now, about the middle of the straightaway in that section, and we'll come down on this section. You see, they're doing all that building back there. Yeah. Right across there, and it's just going to be a mess. Yeah. Well, and again, I want to point. Out, you know, I know that these are good concerns. That roundabout's going to help alleviate. It's, it's not going to help you down at the ends, but in the vicinity of that intersection, it's going to slow people down. That's one of the benefits of it. So, um, just keep that in mind. You were talking about all the signs and all they've got there that's going in, pointing them by the curve and everything. Well, the accident happened. Them signs, I got a dozen of them laid by my oak tree three weeks later. They haven't even been touched or put up. All right, we'll get with Public Works and get them put up. Make a note of that. Yes, sir. Where are you at? Right by the store. Okay, down this end. Okay. Gotcha. So I think you I think you walked in after I talked about the fire hydrants previously. So we we are we have two, three studies right now. Oh, you heard that part? Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't make, so for the speed, yeah. Well, the 18 wheelers serving the warehouse are only supposed to use Veterans Parkway. They're they can't. They're using Broad Avenue now, and they're using Buck Coffin now. And they're 
and they're parking on streets. Yeah. Beverly Street has got an 18 wheeler that parks in the driveway every day. Yeah. Um, every day. To answer your question, a lot of this curbing is rollover, so even though it doesn't look like it's designed for trucks, that that's an apron that the trucks are, it's made for them and designed for them to drive over it. So it will. She doesn't want the trucks in the truck. I understand. Yeah. We don't want the trucks, period. Understood. Yeah. 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 I don't know if any more signage would help, you know, to make aware or, you know, to start at baby steps. But listen, when those warehouses open, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do about it. Well, I understand that. But how do you enforce that? The police. But what my point is, the gentleman you said that parks his truck, maybe that's his means of work. That's I mean, where else? I, I, the people near where I live drive a truck. I mean, I. It, well. Well, you know. Plus the county ordinance on us taking that off by ourselves to put something out there in the road to slow them down. You could, you'd have to get a right of way encroachment permit from the county to do anything in the right of way. So. Can you put signs out there like be checked by radar or something like that? I, I wouldn't recommend it because it, after someone drives by it a couple of times and then doesn't see a cop, it's just not effective. The most, if we can ask Chief to increase enforcement, I think that's the most effective thing we can do out here. On top of once this project, you know, there's going to be some traffic calming features associated with that project. Guardrail. Guardrail. Mm -hmm. Couldn't think of it. Do you think if they put a guardrail down here, it would stop a lot of that? Because it's, it's it not would that tall. It would prevent the damage to his property, yeah, but it wouldn't prevent the accident. That could possibly help do a lot. Well, we are going to well, that might be a oh, we are gonna flatten it out a little bit. Yeah. The thing about it is they're hitting everybody along that not on the mine. So pa Pamela reminded me too, we are flat, you know, right now that's a pretty sharp curve. As part of this, we are flattening that curve out a little bit. We can't eliminate it, but that will help with some of it too. It's going to be more gradual coming around that turn. And there will be curb and gutter. And curb and gutter in that section. Yeah. Yeah. While it's closed, don't have the end on 17 anyway. Oh, because um, at 17? Railroad uh, isn't it? It's like a bridge. It's an yep. uh, overpass there, and so where Gerard came in to 17 was kind of on the down, uh, in the slope of it. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't see over the, um, the overpass. So it was a sight distance issue. So it was a safety issue. Is what it was. It really wasn't a, a safe place to be able to pull out onto 17. Oh, you're talking about at 17 at Lane Avenue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that is that what you meant? Gerard at 17? Well, that's, that's part of what I mean, but my main concern is coming around that curve at the speed they're coming. Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to address the curve with the project. Go ahead. <laughs> um, the overall project, you know, mm -hmm. with the sidewalks yeah. and, of course, the new curbing, I 
section where you've got 15 mile an hour speed limits with children riding their little bicycles on their sidewalks, being able to get out in the front yard play. But this scenario is different with Garrod Avenue. It's not like a new little subdivision and you've got the mom and daddy out there watching the kids. These people speed down this road. And what scares me, you may encourage more children by coming out and getting on their bikes on the sidewalk. You're still gonna have accidents. You know how children are. Sometimes they wanna get in the road, they look, they don't see a car coming. These cars don't go slow. These cars speed. It's like a cut through from 17 to Chatham Parkway to make the backup on 17 to get to Chatham Parkway faster. I don't want to encourage this to be encouraged as a cut through. I understand. Because that's what it is now. So how's that going to eliminate that if you don't lower the speed limit to like 20 miles an hour? We can evaluate the speed limit based on the engineering standards. It's likely not going to justify lowering it. Um, but potentially once this project's done and some of this traffic calming is implemented, the speeds may come down where we could justify lowering it. I'm not saying we can't. We, we will certainly look at it. I, can, I, can't just, I cannot just arbitrarily drop it to 20 miles per hour. I just can't do that. There has to be a justification. The cops give you 10. That's what they tell you. Yeah, well, well, you so mean for a ticket. Again, I. So we're collecting the data. We've committed that we're going to let Chief Hadley know that we can increase enforcement. Mm -hmm. I, That's it. Yes, ma'am. Hey, I got a, I have a okay. question here, and I'll get you. Are the bus? No, you're good. Are the bus stops shown on here yet? Or? Um, the, the, the main bus stop is going to be um, near. It's near uh, the apartments in uh, Veterans Parkway. Uh, that yeah. Brandlewood. Oaks Brandlewood. Of Brandlewood. That's the where the main bus stop is, and we are we are going to include like a bus shelter and everything there. Now, Cat has talked about possibly having some others but um uh, we're not really sure exactly what their plans are but they they might have one if you don't mind me coming up excuse cool. me sorry um there might be one here near brandle way in which case they would probably utilize that right turn lane for the bus you know for the bus to be able to pull out of traffic and then the other place they possibly talked about one was maybe I think um, either Wildwood or Pine, possibly in this area, they might they might have a bus stop. But I don't know if it, if if right now Cat's even sure exactly where they're going to have their bus stops at. Can you request a smaller Cat bus because we see them go by all the time with nobody on them, the big old ones. Well, that that's, that's that would an, be an that, issue that's for Cat. That's an operation issue yeah. for Cat. But the but the main one I think is here, and that will have a shelter. Okay, and it will have a. There's also um, a proposed crossing here, so we can. Uh, so pedestrians can get across to the bus stop, which is important. Is that right where you take a ride and go into the Canvas apartments? Where um, they stop a lot now? Yes. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's how Ms. Washington is. Oh, okay. Just a heads up, there was a bus stop at 40 Gerard, which is that where you were talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, near, 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 Br near Wildwood, that end? Yeah. Wildwood, okay. 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 Uh, okay. So they may not. Well, and that's something CAT looks at from their operational standpoint. They're, they're always looking at adding or deleting if they're not getting the ride, riders. Right, proposed for the, pro yeah, one will be a uh, eight to 10 foot trail and then other side sidewalk. So, yeah. Okay. And then you said they're gonna swap. How are they gonna swap? The trail will start 
start on one side and then yes. it's going to switch to the other side? So at this location, we have a concrete median and then we'll have a crosswalk. Are we doing rapid flashing beacon? We're putting, okay. if you've driven down around Forsyth Park, there's the push buttons that yeah. flash wrap. Yeah. We're going to put those in plus the crosswalk plus the concrete median that will alert drivers that someone's ready to cross and they'll be, they'll be able to cross at that. So it's just north of, it's between Wildwood and Pine Drive is where that crossing's proposed. Sir, you get it. it's uh, partially the the match for the federal funds is coming from SPLOST, but the eighty about eighty percent of the funds are federal. So, that. So what about uh, the fire hydrants that we put in and we would build for? Fire hydrants put in on Garrard. Uh, I can't. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I work in the engineering department. We have nothing. We have zero to do with the fire fee, Chatham Fire, anything. I understand. I live in the county too. I got the fire bill just like y'all did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. More questions? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Actually, the trail we crossed before, so the trail will be on the outer part, and then the five-foot sidewalk will be on the inside of the curve. That's what's proposed now. <coughs> like, we have not gotten the concept report approved for this, so everything's still concept. There can be some changes, but generally we think this is what's going to get approved for the concept report. are on that side mm. on the north side rather than the south side and then also because they thought that possibly a lot of the pedestrian and bike traffic would be headed to 17 and so that was um, you know a more convenient route to take the um, the path to where they could get to 17 easier Okay. And when I walk, I like I gotta get off the street and walk in grass. Yeah. They don't, have, they don't have walkways or anything convenient for myself. And yeah. Safety. So you're on, you're in Brandlewood Drive subdivision. I'm in Sandalwood. Sandalwood. Okay. It's in. Okay. That's. Oh. Okay. So what? So what? We, if you came out Brandlewood Drive walking, uh, you have the opportunity to have an eight to ten. So You want sidewalks in the subdivision? There is not really any. Yeah, but what we're doing on Garrard is we're putting an eight foot. Garrard yeah. is so far from where Brandywood is. So. Not understand. That's what I'm you saying. Want, I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying Well, you'd still been. This is when this project's completed. You would have the benefit of having an, an area to walk on Garrard Avenue if you wanted to. Yes, ma'am. You know, if um, it's easier for people to access from their home, you know, if there's there's no houses on the south side of Lane Avenue there, so. Where exactly will the um, circle be? The roundabout will be at but, right out here at Garrard Avenue and Chatham Parkway. Did, you, did your question get answered? But I mean, you know, honestly, if if everybody agreed, I mean, you know, I mean, we're just trying to do what makes sense, and I mean, it it it, it it's not set in stone. If everybody wants it on that side, 
we can move it to that side. Well, you, right, but that's, oh, I see what you're saying. And you're, the, as far as the crossing, that's why we set it up with a, um, with a, the, the rapid with a crosswalk. Beacons. It will have the, the median um, refuge island and it will have the rapid flashing beacons to make it as safe as we can. And, you and do that will help slow traffic awesome. down some And you too. want to provide those because if you don't, people, <coughs> some people are going to cross anyway. So at least now we're giving them a safe opportunity to do, or a safer opportunity to you do it. You also have more right away currently. Something <coughs> right away on this side. At the intersection. Right. If, if you put this trail path up here, then you're purchasing more right away from this property owner when you already have it down here. So at some point you need to start out on this side. Yeah. For for right away purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. So if we put it right here, this Donna Deegan, it would be right here at the front door, the the ten foot path. So it makes more sense to have it on this side in that case. Thank you. Sorry. No. You're right. Drain off from the road. Yes. Drain holes. Where's all that water going? So is it coming? Uh, everything coming down to this canal well, and going? Uh, where is it ultimately going? Or where? Yeah. I mean, well, we're going to have. Uh, I think there's. So I think there's two. I think there's two basins. You have the Marshall mm -hmm. Branch Canal back here, that will accept some of it, and then you have the canal pipe system that comes down and then crosses down ACL Boulevard. So it's a combination. I'm glad you asked that because we have we we have acquired the right of way to do the Marshall Branch improvements from Chatham Parkway back to Veterans Parkway. Um, we have the right of way. We're just waiting on the permits. So we think by the end of the year we'll have the permits and we'll be able to make the improvements to Marshall Branch in that section. Right. Sure, come on. I talked to the drainage engineer and, and I, I'm trying to remember, it's a, a, but I think all of it either goes, there's, a, there's a, a pond here and then I think it comes down this way and goes out this way somewhere yeah. eventually. I think that's the ultimate route. It yeah. doesn't actually go up to Nothing that. Nothing goes to Marshall, okay. It comes this way and then here. So I think there's two points, okay. if yeah. I'm not mistaken. And then I think this one goes over and across and somewhere else. I'm not really sure. But they're overloaded. So They're you overloaded now. The canal, which has not been Sorry. finished. Sure. You you know, well, and we're working on, we have two or three different drainage projects to alleviate the Westlake area. Everything that drains towards Westlake down by Hunter and then down out to the Forest River, we have, those are all in different stages where we're work, we are actively working on those drainage improvement projects right now. Some are getting closer to construction, some are, we're buying right away, and some we're just designing right now. But we, we understand there are drainage issues out here that we, Yes, I, I know y'all have. I know y'all have. Yeah. Nathaniel, one thing, when they, the swast money was voted back maybe 2003, just to do the canal on the other side, that's where I have another piece of property. And by the time they did the project, it was almost 20 years. I mean, we're yeah. 23 now. And, I understand. And it's late, okay? So they reduced what that other project was with pumping stations, line canals, a road on top that was paved, all of that went away, but that's what we voted for in SWAS, but it didn't happen. Okay. You're talking about the Marshall Branch Canal up here, yes. this side? Yes. Okay. So everything that we have, what? oh no, past that. Down that way. The roundabout, yes. Yeah, it we, ties into the Marshall Avenue. We are actively working on a project to make improvements along there. We, on that that's canal, On that one, and then there's another one that drains Westlake that's further south that goes by Hunter. Yes, we... This whole area is being studied right now and evaluated. It we are. We are. We we have an excellent drainage engineer that loves studying this stuff and finding ways to fix it. And we are actively looking at. The, I mean, if you look at this as a whole basin from 17 to Hunter up to 516, everything we're looking at all of that right now. And the mosquitoes that it brings on. I understand. No, sir. We. And they promised me. Yeah. Four years. Up.
Did you? Well, one of one of my first projects was pays, paving Marshall Avenue. So, really? yeah, was yeah. <laughs> At least wait till wait till the cameras are off, then you can do it. Yeah. Fine. I don't know Jesse Carter Jr., but that's fine. Awesome. Yeah, on R.B. Miller. Yeah, yep. You're right. We have been successful at getting a few here and there. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Um, I live on Redgate Farms, which okay. is right off the Chatham Parkway. <clears throat> and when Chatham Parkway and Bessie Parkway came through late 80s, early 90s, we, um, we forfeited and forepaid for 40 acres of Redgate. And it cut, basically cut the, our property into quarters. Did you so say four, 40 acres? 40, they took, <coughs> took 40 acres? We okay. Paid for it. Gotcha. So they, yeah. Gotcha. Um, both highways, Chatham and Bessert. Yeah. Anyway, pertaining to the drainage, that's been 25 plus years ago. The drainage was never done, never fixed. Still, we're arguing with the county about the drainage to this day. My second question, or my, that was a statement, my second question, or my question is, we have been trying to find out what type of traffic count report has been done recently since Chatham Parkway and Bessemer Parkway was built. We cannot seem to get a direct answer. Has a recent traffic count report been done yet? Traffic volumes on Veterans Parkway? On Chatham Parkway. On Chatham Parkway, we can look. GDOT, on an annual basis, does traffic counts almost yearly, especially on those major roads. I'm sure we got data on our, did we do counts on Chatham Parkway? Like um, just in this section to see, yeah, right so we should have, but that's not gonna, this, that's gonna be south of veterans. So that's probably, are you concerned no. where, in the section where y'all live? No. Well, unfortunately, the sit, the, a lot of those parcels have been annexed. The city typically will work with us and, and require them to do a traffic study, but our only means of controlling anything is issuing a right-of-way encroachment permit for a driveway. So as a part of that, we're going to ask those same questions, um, and they're going to have to demonstrate to us that it's not an impact. I don't know how you do that, um, but that, that's kind of where we are right now. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's happening. Questions also is how were people notified about this meeting? I know how I personally was notified, but how, how, what 
was the advertisement that was put out there so that people would know about this particular meeting tonight? Sean, you want you? So Sean's in our PIO office. I don't want to put him on the spot, but he'd probably better to answer that than I. Right. Yeah. We, we did a press release on this meeting, and I'm not sure how many of you saw it, but we did publicize uh, a press release. Uh, and, you know, this is just preliminary, and we're going to have another meeting when we get a little further along, and we're going to try to get out and, and uh, you know, put out some flyers and let people know when we'll have the next meeting. All right, and also, too, I ask that everybody fill out the sign-in sheets because we're asking for your email addresses. If you don't have an email address and you prefer to be contacted or reached in another way, that's why we're asking for a physical address. If we have time to do a physical, to mail out, what I do is I send an email out at least twice a month to all of my constituents and I think you're on my list. But for everybody that's in here, I try to communicate whatever we've got going on by email. Of course, unfortunately, that's where we are in this day and time because I did come out here and I did hit some of those neighborhoods with flyers, but it was just me. So unfortunately, I probably didn't reach everybody, but I reached as many as I could. Uh, <laughs> well, you supposed to build <laughs> But the county has to pay for it. Are you going to pay for it? It's tax money. <laughs> Did I put it in your mailbox? <laughs> I did put it in somebody's mailbox. Not unless you have a sample. And I thought it was going to help. Yeah, and I walked to her, her house. <laughs> and, she did, and she did put some out, too. So, you know, if you, if you have she a does. method that she, you would like does. to be contacted, get on her just contact. let me know. Put your email address on, on the thing. And Commissioner Milton does, she said, by, almost twice a month. Yeah, if uh, Commissioner you, Milton has your email address, she will put you on the no her list. Well, I want yours. Okay. <laughs> put it on there. In order to find about who with the county do I need to contact about possibly putting that guardrail around that problem? Uh, it'd be a combination of the engineering department and the uh, public works department. So any, if there are no more questions, we've given everyone a comment sheet. No, you don't. <laughs> we, uh, we've given you out a comment sheet. You can make comments, make comments. County rezoning is going to be sometime in April. So it hasn't been said no, yet. it hasn't been. I don't think that the was the meeting that you went down to that they took off the agenda. Yeah, it hasn't gone back on the agenda. I think, I think that may be a city meeting. It may be a city meeting, but it's still an MPC. It's MPC, right? Uh huh. Yeah. It's, it's still an MPC. Okay, so it's not. A city but I don't know. I'm not quite sure exactly where you're talking yes. about. Is that that may be a parcel because they've because they've spot 
annexed a lot of that. Right now. I need to know exactly what the address is to tell you if it's in the city or the county. Okay. I think the last we talked it is still in the county and they were going for a rezone. To go to the city? To get a rezone from what it is now to light commercial, whatever that zone is. Okay, light, light industrial. Which is light industrial, which is the same zoning that they have for all the warehouses. For the warehouses. They're trying to get a rezone for that. So I'm just trying to make sure, and I know you're trying to keep us posted, but for everybody that's here that Do you have any more questions? Now, when they do a, when they do a, when they go to the, we should to be under construction. the NPC, they send, they, they should send you a list. Everybody along that corridor, they should, yeah. Should, we have we have we have, we have property that abutted the property that was rezoned. That's not in that, that's not within that 300 feet radius. So, well, we'll, we'll try to find out and if, if uh, the commissioner has your email address, we'll send it to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we, that's the last project we worked on after the meeting, it was, it was continued. Okay. Well, no, they asked to be removed. Removed, okay. It was removed from that agenda. But when I spoke to Marcus, he said it was going into April. Okay. So I'll get an exact date for you. <laughs> I'm just trying to herd cats. <laughs> herd cats. You're miss all the if, 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 if we, if, 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 if all minds are clear, is that what the pastor says? If yep. all minds are clear, um, we can adjourn this meeting tonight. You got something you want to say?